Hi, I'm Tom Long. Our passage this week is John chapter 10, verse 10. When I was a kid, westerns were all the rage on TV, and it was easy to tell the difference between the good guys and the bad guys because the bad guys wore black hats and the good guys wore white hats. Now, in the real world, it can be a little difficult to tell the good guys from the bad guys. But believe it or not, in our passage for this week, Jesus tells us, how do you tell the good ones from the bad ones? And vice versa, of course. Join me. Let's walk and talk. To get the most out of this video, you may want to pause here and read John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. If you paused, welcome back. He was a man born blind. The literal Pharisees of his day saw that as a sign of judgment on him or his parents. Jesus saw it as a need. Having compassion on him, he healed the man's eyesight. Now, the Pharisees had their elevated religious positions because of their cooperation with the occupying Roman forces. The popular support that was growing for Jesus and his miraculous acts of compassionate healing and deliverance was a threat to their positions of privilege. So they called the man in under the guise of an investigation and encouraged him to denounce Jesus as not having been sent from God, but on the contrary, Jesus as a sinner. When that failed, they kicked the man whose eyesight had been healed out of the synagogue. Now, Jesus had already told some of the Pharisees that they were children of the devil because they were plotting to have Jesus killed. Now in the reading we have for this fourth Sunday of Easter, Jesus addresses the Pharisees again after the incident between the Pharisees and the man born blind. To really latch on to what Jesus is saying in this metaphor, we should know that the political and religious leaders of the day were known as shepherds, just as many Protestant traditions refer to their church leaders as pastors, which is the Latin word for shepherd. Now, shepherds often brought their sheep into the village uh, sheep pen where a gatekeeper watched over them until the shepherds returned to claim their sheep. Now, in John chapter 10, verses 1 through 9, Jesus begins to make clear that not everyone who tries to control the sheep, God's people, is the legitimate shepherd of the sheep. In English, a thief and a robber are pretty much synonymous, but in the language of the day, a thief was someone who sneaks in and steals, an embezzler or a con. They take things without being noticed until it's too late. A robber was more like a bushwhacker back in the days of America's westward expansion. The robber violently storms in and takes what they want, wreaking destruction at every step. Then there is the stranger that pretends like he or she is the sheep's shepherd. Stranger danger. Jesus says that he is the gate. Anyone entering the sheep pen not through him is a thief or a robber. Then he draws this sharp contrast between the stranger, thief, and robber and the shepherd of the sheep. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That is, have life to the full. Want to know who is working for evil and who is working for the welfare of the sheep? Look at what they leave in their wake. The entitled false shepherds, the thief and robber Pharisees, had no compassion on the man born blind and separated him by excommunication from the people of his community, like a wolf singling out a ship, sheep for destruction. In verses 11 through 18, Jesus sets himself up as the example of what a shepherd should be, saying that he is the good shepherd. He was the one who had shown compassion and brought healing to the man born blind. He leads his sheep to the pastures and water they need for life and protects them from danger. 
he is the one that gathers the sheep together instead of, instead of dividing them into factions, smaller groups that can be preyed upon by wolves, robbers, and thieves. Good leaders in our churches and communities are those working to make the lives of people better, more abundant, more full. Bad leaders sow division within communities, religious communities in particular. They take from those in need even what little they have, mercilessly exploiting them, sometimes by stealth from within. Other times when their con doesn't work, they turn to force, coercion, and violence. Admittedly, most of our passage is addressed to the Pharisees, but there is a little description of us sheep as well. We need to recognize our master's voice when he calls us and not go off following the agents of division, death, and destruction. Lord, give your people ears to hear our shepherd's voice and follow only those who have come in through the gate of Jesus. Give us a full life in the Christ who laid his life down for us and then took it back up, never to die again. Amen.